Hello guys, welcome back to Watch Time. Today's movie recap will be an adventure, drama, and sci-fi movie from 2017 called Raka. Warning, there are spoilers ahead. The movie starts in Texas in 2020 where a survivor tells the story. She says humans used to be important, but now they're just seen as pests. She explains how the creature named Clum came to Earth to destroy humans and take their culture and history. They built a place to keep the survivors and cover the ground with the bodies of those who were dying. Some people who left the survivors group say the situation is even worse than hell. The Clums killed many humans as soon as they got here and made huge structures that released methane, making the air like their own planet. They also killed off Earth's plants to grow their own, which made the Earth warmer and caused cities to flood. Another enemy called the Vermin set forests on fire, making the air unbreathable, especially near certain areas. The Clums can look into a person's eyes and control their mind, making them unable to move and turning them into slaves. Most survivors are hiding on the ground or in old buildings, finding just enough food to stay alive and keep fighting. They formed a group and armed themselves, but they had to use whatever they could find as weapons because they didn't have much. The Clums' main weapon and their stockpile have something called Nanite. Despite having very little, the Resistance kept fighting, determined to break free from the Clums' grip. They brought together people from all walks of life to fight the Clums and win their freedom. They're also trying to save other humans and learn more about the Clums. They've seen how the Clums treat humans like things, doing experiments on them and throwing them away when they're not useful anymore. At one point, a prisoner who's been experimented on is in so much pain he wishes to die, but the Clums just watch him suffer. Eventually, the Clums meet the president of a country and they use a mysterious device to open his head. Next, they filled his head with strange alien cells. Soon after, the aliens took over the president, making him like a zombie. They made him do what they wanted and trick humans into not fighting back. The president talked about living together in peace, but it was just a trick. While he was talking, the clums were busy hunting and killing any humans left, but the survivors didn't fall for this trick. At that moment, a survivor named Della stepped out pretending to give up, but she was covered in explosives. The Clums realized her plan and detonated the explosives before she could act, but they didn't know that Dawson, another survivor, had already set off a bomb trap. Later, children were seen happily picking up a Clums severed limb. Even though there were only a few survivors, this small win helped keep their spirit of resistance alive, even if just a little. The aliens kept attacking human buildings with a liquid that looked like oil. The survivors made mental shields to stop the clums from controlling their minds, but the clums knew that the humans would run out of materials for these shields and then they could take over Earth. The clums believed they would win this long drawn out war against the remaining humans. They also used some female prisoners in a terrible way that led to their deaths. After some time, the clums destroyed a group of fighters with a bomb from the air. Then a soldier who survived the attack saw a figure that looked like an angel appearing out of nowhere, similar to the Northern Lights. Days later, the changed world affected everyone. In this new world, Nosh, who is good with technology and loves making bombs, lives far from the resistance in a junkyard but is very important to them because he can make useful things, including bombs and mental shields out of junk. Afterward, the leader of the fighters, Jasper, who has a lot of robot parts in her body, and her team visit Nosh's place. They want to buy weapons from him to use in their fight when one of Jasper's team asks about a special device called a brain lock Nosh says it's not for sale, which makes the guy angry. So Jasper talks to Nosh, telling him they need his help and are willing to pay. Nosh just says he likes that the clums have invaded because now he can set fires without getting in trouble with the law. Jasper asks Nosh about his obsession with fire and he says he knows he'll eventually die in a fire. The fighters don't like Nosh because he enjoys violence and asks them to use people who are hurt or don't want to live anymore in his traps. But they need the traps and special shields he makes so they have to agree to his terms. Jasper says these kinds of deals wouldn't make sense in a peaceful time, but now in this changed world, anything goes. Then, the fighters find Amir, a silent prisoner who escaped the clums in Sector 7. Jasper tells him she won't hurt him and offers to help him help them. But another fighter thinks they should get rid of Amir because of what the clums did to his brain. Jasper stops her team from hurting Amir and hands him over to a fighter named Sarah. Sarah tries to get Amir to join their cause while giving him food and drinks. She believes Amir can help them because the Clums experiments gave him special foresight abilities. Meanwhile, Jasper and her team are checking on other injured people and seeing the horrible things the Clums did to them. 
When she gets back to Sarah, she tries to see what the clums did to Amir by removing his coverings. At first, Amir doesn't want her to, but he eventually lets her see the robotic parts covering his head and shoulders. Despite everything, Amir has become something new in this changed world. The next night, the fighters are practicing and getting ready for a fight. Sarah shows Amir how they're fighting like they used to and explains they're trying to stop the clones from hurting anyone else as they hurt him. Meanwhile, one of Jasper's team members asks her about the connection between Sarah and Amir. Jasper reveals she lost her daughter to the clumps experiments and thinks that's why Sarah is drawn to Amir, believing they all have something in common with the clums. Amir gets better both mentally and physically, and thanks to his implant, he sees a vision of an injured clum escaping from the fighters. Sarah asks Amir to help them catch the clum to stop further harm. Amir's vision clears as they talk, and he sees an attack coming. Although Amir hasn't spoken, he envisions the fighters making a bold move to shoot down the alien ship, giving them an advantage. The Clum pilot is now on the run. Sarah wonders if they can learn enough to hunt the Clum and scare them. Amir can't speak, but he sees a future where a Clum uses mind control against a soldier who then attacks his team. The other soldiers are forced to take him down. Sarah tells Amir he has the Clum's powers and must use them to help humanity. In Amir's vision, the fighters surround the Clum, and Jasper orders them to be headed after a fierce fight with heavy losses on both sides. Humans manage to damage the Clum's command system, but many are lost in the process. The film closes with Sarah urging Amir to use his newfound abilities, believing he is humanity's last hope. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Take care and see you next time.